more hug, my Nyonga. Two more hug. I cut his hair last night and I did not do that good of a job, but I'm um, getting better. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you give a kiss? Kiss to doggy. No, okay. That's okay. All right, let's get up. Morha Alamal. Today I thought I would take you guys on a day in the life um, of me. <clears throat> First of all, I think it's really hard for me to imagine why anybody would care what I do all day. But at the same time, I completely understand because I love to watch random people on the internet. <laughs> um, and look at their daily routines. I don't know why. I think it's just the concept of people watching. Um, so yeah, I watch like really random people in the Siberian wilderness living in a cabin and I just find it so interesting. <laughs> Basically, um, my morning already, I went on a five kilometer jog and then I came home and um, made some green juice. No, I'm just kidding. But how annoying would that be? No, basically I just wake up whenever um, I have to. So this morning it was 8 a.m. We don't have to be, I don't have to be at uni until 9.30, so we slept in a little bit. And what do you need, baby? Um, Jack's eating <coughs> right now. And I am, you might wonder why I'm not eating. Basically, I have to take my thyroid medication in the morning and it needs to be on an empty stomach for 45 minutes, which is honestly sometimes annoying, especially when I just want like a coffee. But that's my life and that's gonna be my life forever. So um, that's why I usually don't eat in the morning, but then I'm like starving at 10 a.m. So I usually, pack myself something like a smear cast sandwich um, to get myself through the morning. Um, and I do not recommend doing that. <laughs> smear cast is so delicious. My house arts told me that I need to eat less smear cast and th that was clearly an attack on my lifestyle. Packing my backpack. All I really need is my laptop and then to refill my water bottle. I feel like every single Dutch person has this brand backpack. Okay, ready to go. Okay, dropped Jack off and I am on my way to, it's actually not a lecture, it's like a meeting with my work group. So this is, I've actually never been in this building. It's a Friday, so there's like no one here. <laughs> Usually, and I'll show you later, you can definitely see like around lunchtime and stuff, how, you know, overcrowded the university is. If it's raining outside, it's really hard to get a seat inside. So some students did a whole like protest the other day on these paper cups and you know they're right like we shouldn't be using them at all. I'm going to remember next week I promise myself I'm gonna go through storage and find my to-go tumbler and I won't be using these anymore. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I got to lecture a little bit early. Um, I'm just gonna work on some <clears throat> internship applications. <clears throat> I think this lecture's on, let's see, um, health system performance frameworks. So yeah, that'll be two hours. Right now, I'm just working on a project on <clears throat> um, online learning conditions, uh, mental health for adolescents in Ukraine. So I'm making an <coughs> Excel spreadsheet on that. <coughs> and yeah, I'll check in in a little while. This is the NU building. It was recently built. Obviously, as you can see, it's beautiful. I do question why the architects decided to make it completely hollow, just given the space issue and the lack of seating that students complain about. I personally would have went with a different design. Okay, just got out of lecture. It's freezing. It's two degrees. Um, and I'm gonna go home and get some work done at home, put the heater on, make myself a cup of tea. Okay, just went to Holland Hall, uh, picked up some beverages. It's my classmate's birthday tonight, so we are gonna go out. I don't go out a lot, but wanted to get something for her. Okay, just got ready. I'm gonna go to dinner with my husband. We're gonna go get Chinese food at this place called Amber Garden in Amstelfein. It's probably one of the best restaurants I've ever been to. I would highly recommend it. If you've never had like upper scale Chinese food, it's life changing. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, check it out. It's pretty expensive. So just go for a special occasion like we are. Wow, this is one of the most exciting soccer matches I've ever watched. Hey guys, I just wanted to update you on how I'm doing and what I've been up to the last few months. Um, <clears throat> I know some people have been like a little bit concerned about me, but I'm actually doing really, really well <laughs> right now. Um, I should probably switch to Dutch. Uh, ik ben heel blij met mijn leven in Nederlands. Um, mijn zoon is ook heel er, er blij met de kinderopvang. And um, ik find universiteit heel leuk. In general, things are just really positive right now for me and my family. Um, I really, really am enjoying uh, uni and honestly, my son is so happy and just thriving. I cannot say enough good things about the daycares um, in this country. His teachers are literally wonderful. Every day they do a new fun you know activity for the kids they were painting yesterday and um cinder class came also recently and he's just enjoying it so much and yeah i'm just really really happy right now and um i realized that i didn't even tell you guys what i'm going to school for um yeah, so uh, my degree that I'm working on right now, it's uh, a master's in global health research. So this is something that actually I wanted to always pursue. Uh, I always had aspirations of, you know, doing research and doing humanitarian stuff, you know, helping patients on a larger scale. So this is kind of 
a dream come true for me that I'm able to, to get this degree. Yeah, so the whole idea of the program um, and what we discuss a lot about is how to um, basically reduce health disparities on a global scale, but how to do that in an ethical way and basically moving out of this, moving into a whole new way that we're doing research and you know, especially when you are coming from the global north, a high income country, and you're going into the global south, maybe in a low middle income country, and you are, you know, doing research, or especially a lot of these nonprofits, they will advertise volunteers and people will go in, and it's almost like this special kind of tourism that is really, um, it's not helping. And but people want that experience, but it's it's not about you. And so that's kind of what the whole program is about and how to do, basically how to do research. It's about 30 of us in the program. I would say like one third Dutch probably. Um, and we're all pretty close. And actually something really, really traumatic happened the first week of school that I still kind of tr have trouble talking about but and I just want to be careful I can't really say a lot about it but and I'm gonna do a trigger warning a mental health trigger warning on the screen but basically the first week of school a uh, a man a professor he he took his life it, literally in front of us um it was probably the worst thing i've ever seen uh i i did try to do cpr and do some life-saving measures but um yeah i wasn't able to get his pulse back so it was just awful it was completely completely traumatizing for me you know I have seen a lot of stuff in my days as a nurse. I, blood doesn't scare me, stuff like that. But for a lot of the students, it was really, really uh, shocking. And a lot of people were in therapy for a while. And I think everyone has made peace with it. And we were able to send condolences to the family. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about that. So after that, I think we all just kind of became really close. And um, yeah, I really like my classmates. I think I'm one of the older ones. So at the age of 28, all these youngsters, these 22, 23 year olds, but they're so mature for their age. So a few things about a, a Dutch university as an immigrant coming in that I find that I have found really surprising one is the grading system in general so it's out of 10 and i think it's really strange because no one gets a 10 no one hardly ever gets a nine and most people generally score a six or seven on a course or an exam and i think that's just been a little bit you know, unusual for me because we have A, B, C, D system and a lot of people do score an A. And so it's satisfying, you know, because that's the highest grade you can achieve and it's possible to do that. But I asked my professor because I received a seven and a half on my paper and I was like, you know, what's wrong with it? And he said, nothing's wrong with it. I said, then why didn't it get a 10? And he said, we just don't do that out here. And so I just need to adjust my expectations and just be proud of myself because he's telling me that a seven and eight is good. So, but yeah, I think it just goes back to that Dutch culture of just be normal, you know, like, it's not very, very praised to 
exceed and to just go that extra mile and why would you even want to be perfect nothing is perfect so why are we going to give out tens so that's the probably the biggest one of the bigger culture shocks in terms of an academic institution um difference and also actually what was more shocking for me is that you in in dutch unis and actually a lot of european unis you are allowed to retake an exam <laughs> so that has been wild for me because i i almost didn't even believe them my classmates they were like yeah if you fail you just you just retake it it's not a big deal and for me you know at my uni if you fail you fail <laughs> and um you would have to retake the whole class and we have semester systems so you would have to redo a whole another four or five months and then and then retake the exam so no you don't just get a reset in the states and my classmates were like no wonder you guys are so stressed out over there and yeah i definitely prefer this system i think you should have an opportunity, a second chance to show your knowledge and everybody has a bad day and there's really no reason to stress people, students out like that. I recall being in nursing school and there was a lot of students, oh my gosh, I mean, girls literally throwing up before exams because they knew that if they failed that exam, they would never be a nurse. Exams out here, exam weeks are like so stress-free for me now because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I can just take it again if I have to. Obviously, I don't want to do that, but it takes a lot of pressure off me. <laughs> so yeah, and what else? I, I mentioned already the unis everyone knows are really crowded uh our exams they actually rent out the convention center for a lot of our exams because there's not enough rooms but overall i'm really happy with you know the quality of the education so in this video i had mentioned that i went out with my friends last friday night and another thing i wanted to discuss was culturally the differences in nightlife and just going out culture so uh i think that i well i had a great time but i do think that the music is very very heavily dominated by edm techno i i wish that there was a little bit more influence from other cultures i mean for me i listen to hip-hop so and they do not play that out here i kid you not i cannot find one place to go out dancing with my friends that they play hip-hop that is a little bit disappointing for me but what makes up for it is i really really appreciate as a young woman being able to go out with my girlfriends and dance with my friends and literally not be hit on by a man every five minutes like that is a new amazing experience like i don't think you understand if you go out where i'm from in san francisco you literally cannot even enjoy your night every five minutes a creep comes up can i buy you a drink yada yada it's like you can't enjoy so that i really really appreciate out here thank you Thank you, Dutch men, for not being creepy. I'm gonna try to speed up the rest of this video because this game is so crazy. So Messi got this really, really soft PK and it was, he didn't really deserve it, but they're going into overtime. So I'm gonna go back out and watch the game. But the next time I talk to you, so I, I'm going to go home to Cali for a week in um, for for the holidays. I I've been in Netherlands for one year and I have not gone home. So uh, this will be I'm really looking forward to it to see my family and my niece and everyone. Uh, I 
am not gonna bring Jack. Ultimately, it was decided that I'm just gonna go by myself for a week, but I, I don't wanna be apart from him for too long, so that's why I'm. it's gonna be a really short trip. But yeah, I basically just didn't wanna do a plane ride with him. I just wasn't keen on doing that. So <laughs> he's gonna stay at home with my husband and um it'll just be like a little vacation for me <laughs> so if you guys want me to vlog that i can so yeah that's kind of been my life in a nutshell <laughs> the last few months and i hope you guys are doing well and happy holidays uh yeah good night you guys Dah. <laughs> <laughs>